You guys just opened up the upper bowl for tickets from this game on Sunday. Just how excited are the girls right now for what you have coming up? They're ecstatic, you know. Um, I'm, I'm excited too. I think it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. Obviously, you got an in-state rival uh, rivalry going on, and that that always brings some excitement. But to have fans actually come out and want to see us perform, um, you know, I, I think it's been a while since we've we've had that many fans here, and and a lot of people have been talking to me. You know, some of the speaking engagements, things I'm doing, and they're like, you know, we're bringing some excitement back to. Uh, Springfield and you know I just want to get back to the old days when we used to pack you know Hammonds and and uh, just see what we can do as far as attendance and fans and just keep touching the community. How special is it to have this kind of a rivalry I mean because the men don't play Mizzou and Missouri State don't play that much uh, in, in a lot of the other sports uh, but with the women's basketball it seems it's something you can keep going. Yeah, you know, I um, everywhere I've been, you know, we've had in-state rivalries, and it's just like it brings another level of competitiveness out of you, out of yourself as coaches, but out, out of your players, and I love it. Um, you know, so to be able to play Mizzou and for them to actually, you know, continue this uh, this series with us, because you know, a lot of times people don't want to do that. You know, they don't have to. We're not in the same conference. We don't have to play, but. For them to want to continue it, and obviously I want to continue it, it's going to be great. I just think it's, it's great for basketball, women's basketball, it's great for the fans, um, and for our players, you know, and, and to compete with the um, SEC school and in our state, is just a, is, it'll be a fun experience. And they get to come here, I mean, that's something, you know, you're not having to go to their place. Yeah, you know, because it's hard to get teams to come here, and, and in power five teams at that, you know, so, um, you know, I just really appreciate them for uh, wanting to continue this, you know, series with us, but also, to have a Power 5 team in our state that we can play on our court um, is just a great opportunity and we're ready to seize the moment. The girls said that uh, this they just kind of want to show their Missouri's team. Just how much have you kind of used that and how much do they not even have to worry about trying to motivate them for this? You know, I mean, I, I try to motivate them every game, you know, but I think, uh, I think they got a lot of motivation for this one. And, you know, they're excited and it's been a, it's been a little bit of time here since we've actually pulled out a win against Mizzou, so I, I, honestly, I don't think I have to do too much motivation. Um, you know, they're going to be pretty hype. I think more so I'm going to have to keep them level, you know, keep them calm. You don't want to get too hype. You know, you get too hype, then you can go out there and come out flat. But um, so I think that's where I'm going to have to just kind of have everybody be calm. Let's just stay focused, you know, stick to the game plan and execute it that way. And how are your young, young ladies? Because it's been a while since they've been on the court. Is it rust? Is it rest? What have you always bought into and what are you seeing? Because I mean, that was a physical game the last time you were out there. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was very yeah. physical. Um, I think, you know, my, my biggest thing during finals week is to manage them mentally and physically. You know, I think mental and physical, physical fresh players are better. Um, so we don't practice every day during finals week. You know, we do some shooting, we do some lifting and stuff just to keep them in shape and stamina and all that. But, you know, I need them to focus on finals and not get overwhelmed and um, you know, because when you when that happens, if you put too much in or you you take up too much of their time when they're trying to study, the next thing you know, they're overwhelmed. They can get exhausted. So I just want to keep them fresh. You know, so we sprinkle in some practices, but a lot of shooting. Um, you know, conditioning. Just keep their you know uh, you know their, just make sure they don't get out of shape. I guess you could say. But honestly, it, this is a time where they have some mental and physical reprieve. About a month in now, uh, what are you seeing that the Lady Bears still need to improve on uh, that you think they need to be caught up by now in the middle of December? Well, I, I think we're ahead of where I wanted us to be at this point or expected us to be, but we're not playing our best basketball. I've said that a million times. Um, and we don't need to be. Honestly, you don't need to be playing your best basketball until February. But we got to get better. There's a lot of things we got to get better at. I mean, I think every, every team in the country is still getting better. but. Um, you know, we just got to keep our turnovers down. I want to see that offensively. Um, but defensively is where we need to make the most strides, I think, being consistent on defensive end, you know, guarding the ball. Um, you know, I think our rebounding has been pretty good. But, like, we, we've been playing against so many different teams. And Mizzou is going to be another one where our post player is going to have to guard some guards. Um, where we have some mismatch problems. But I just, I just want us to be consistent on defensive end. Sometimes we get a little uninterested or we take breaks on the defensive end. Um, so that's just something that we're going to keep getting better and better at, and hopefully in February it'll all be clicking. And one of those players from Mizzou is Haley Frank, who's from our area. We've watched her for four years. What have you seen on tape from this young lady? She's talented. You know, she's talented. I think she's starting to get more and more comfortable over there. Um, you know, Mizzou, Mizzou's a young team all around, and I think you, you're not really sure what team's going to show up. You know, they've had some games where they look great, you know, and then they had some games where you could see a little bit of their youth. So. We just, you know, we're going to respect all. <clears throat> we're going to expect, um, you know, Frank to have a 
you know, a little bit of motivation playing at home, you know, or in her home area. I guess you could say she's not at home on the court, but uh, playing in Springfield. So I think, you know, honestly, you just, we can't predict what Mizzou team is going to show up, you know, and I think, you know, we just got to be prepared for either, you know, either team that shows up. But I think for us, defensively is going to be, you know, where we have to stand out, honestly, because we're, we're going to have to guard some guards at the post position, and we're going to have to um, guard some really, really good guards with our guards, you know. So I honestly really think that they're going to have a trouble guard. They're going to have trouble guarding us, but we're going to have a lot of trouble guarding them. So we just got to continue to stick to the game plan. The it's a kind of a home course. You want a couple state championships out here. Um, <laughs> this series, is this the last of the series? I mean, is, is this something that you want to try to continue to, to build contract-wise into the future? Or where does it stand right now? I would love to keep this going. Again, I love in-state rivalries. Honestly, I think it's great for our game. I think it's great for the fans. I think it's great for the players. So as long as, as, long as they want to keep it going, um, which I really hope they do, I would love to. Um, you know, I, I think that there's not, I mean, there's some other Power 5 schools, you know, you got Arkansas and Kansas that are close by, but there's something different about that in-state and the rivalry between the two. So as long as we can keep it going, I, I'm all for it. And you're recruiting against them, too. I mean, you guys are going after the same players, right? You yeah, yeah, you know, and that's where we want to be with this program to keep growing it. Like, we want to be going after kids that are uh, BCS Power 5 level. You know, that's how you continue to get better. I think we have some on our team already that could play at that level. And, you know, so, yeah, we're going to have some recruiting battles against them. I mean, I don't know if they think that, you know, we shouldn't be having recruiting battles against them. But, I mean, the truth of the matter is we do. We recruit a lot of the same players, um, you know, and I think our our success last year and our recent success last year and this year is going to help us, you know, pull some of those players. But um, it is. It's a rivalry on, you know, all fronts, to be honest, on the court, off the court. Um, so it, it's exciting. We brought up scheduling. Just have you, how much have you done right now? And um, have you noticed any di more difficulties now that you guys are kind of <laughs> naturally ranked, just where you are right now? Yeah. Um, our schedule for next year is probably about three-fourths of the way done. What the biggest problem is getting home games, yeah. you know, and it's not even just Power 5 schools that don't want to come here. It's pretty much everybody. Nobody <laughs> wants to come here. Um, fan bases continue to grow. Obviously, it's a hard place to play. Historically, it's a hard place to play. And now, obviously, we're getting some national recognition. So people are like, why do we want to go there, you know? So scheduling has been challenging, but I, I know, you know, and even talking to our administration, it's always challenging because, you know, we're, we're a successful program. Um, but, you know, we're trying to get more home and homes. We're going to play uh, some Power 5 schools. We have about four of them on our schedule already, but we want to get them here. You know, our fans want to see those teams, and, and that's the difficult part. But, you know, we still want to compete against those guys. We want to schedule up, you know, because I think it helps you prepare for conference and it helps you prepare for postseason. And the NCAA RPI has uh, you guys as the number two team in the country. What, what does that mean? That's huge. Um, you know, we talk a lot about um, – Obviously, staying humble and hungry. Uh, I don't want our kids to get big-headed. I don't want them to be satisfied or complacent with anything that's going on now. But we do celebrate the small victories. Um, having a two RPI, you know, especially at a mid-major, is you know, you don't see that very often, and and it helps you prepare for postseason. So we always talk about building our resume um, for the NCAA tournament. So. The higher the RPI, the better the seed. And now we're in talks of if we can continue to go where we're going and be consistent, possibly we could host, you know. And that's something that if we, if we can bring the NCAA tournament first and second round to Springfield um, here at JQH, that would be amazing. You know, I'm, I'm not sure that that's happened, or at least it hasn't happened in a while. I don't want to say that. Um, but I, I think that, that would our fans would show out, you know, our players would be – putting themselves in position to make another run in postseason, and, you know, that would be the ultimate goal. So we just got to stay consistent. Right now, having a two RPIs is, is great, but there's a lot of season left.